Hi, welcome back to MongoDB. My name is Tim Kelly, and today we're going to learn how to create, deploy, and prepare our MongoDB Atlas clusters for our AI workloads, all using Terraform. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through what we need to get started. First of all, you're going to need a MongoDB Atlas account. If you're following along with this tutorial word for word, you're going to need a billing method added to that, because I use a paid tier cluster, an M10. If you're using an M0 cluster for your provisioning, then that's a different story. That's free forever. But to follow along with this, you will need a billing method. As well as that, you're going to need Terraform installed on your machine, so the latest major core version, so at least v1.9 as of writing this recording to do everything we're going to be doing in this tutorial. Now down below, I've linked the written tutorial where I go through all these steps, so if you just want to copy and paste the code as you're following along, really easy way to do it, definitely recommend. As well as that, there will be the GitHub repo to the files in this tutorial, and if you're using the written tutorial, I show you how to do everything we're going to do in this video, as well as how to hook it up to a Spring AI RAG app. Now, if you're using a Python app, if you're using a Node.js app, that's absolutely fine. We're only looking after the MongoDB side of this. So we're going to be creating that MongoDB cluster and adding a vector search index so we can get ready for those AI searching features. Okay, so now that we have the prerequisites covered, we're going to actually go to how we provision all of our MongoDB database, project, indexes, etc. using Terraform. So we're going to start with a blank main.tf file and a blank variables.tf file in whatever ID you like. And we'll start with the variables file. So here I'm just going to paste in a bunch of values and we'll go through them one by one. So we'll start with the Atlas org ID. So this I'll link down below to the documents about how to get all of this as well as the written tutorial for this video. But for the MongoDB Atlas organization ID, that will be the organization that your project will be part of. And in that project, it will contain the clusters. As well as for that organization ID, we need a public and a private key. So with the public and private key, what you're going to do is you're going to create these and you're going to establish these keys to have the permissions of a project owner. This will allow them to create projects within that organization. These API keys do keep them secret, uh, they have a lot of power, and if you have a billing method on your MongoDB Atlas account, then of course someone with these could go wild. You don't want that, so you are going to want to keep these private. Now, underneath these public keys and private keys, you're going to have the cluster name. This is going to be the cluster that we're going to connect to with our Spring AI RAG app. Now, I've named it here just as RAG cluster. As you'll see for the rest of these, I don't have a default type. That's just because I don't want these written down. In the code, I'm going to use environment variables to set these, and I'll show you how to do that later. But for this, it's absolutely fine just to write our reg cluster. Now, underneath that, you're going to have your project name. So this project is what's going to contain our rag app. Now, for this, I'll change that just to rag project. Uh, follow the naming convention I established earlier. But again, this rag project will contain our rag cluster. One project can contain many clusters but each cluster can only be part of one project. Next, we have our DB username and our DB password. So for these, we're going to actually create this user in our main.tf file. The DB user is what we'll need to actually perform operations on our database. So if there's no DB user, there's no assigned roles, and we don't know what anyone can do to the database. So the DB user will say it will have read, write permissions, and this will allow us to read and or both read and write to the database. And then underneath that, we do have the IP address. So the IP address is going to be the address that you're connecting to the MongoDB database from. This will need to be whitelisted in Atlas. And as well as that, you will not be able to use the universal 0.0.0, .0 IP address. You will need to use an actual IP address. And because of that, do pay attention. If you're using something like a VPN, make sure that it is your own one. Now, once we have all of these variables, again, set the environment variables and we'll move on to the main.tf file. Okay, so you'll see here I'm in my Atlas UI. So I've just gone to the access manager and gone to organization access. And here I have my API keys. So if I go down and I just hit create API key, I can give a short, just, yep, test your Terraform. That sounds good to me. And for this, I will make myself an organization owner. 
this will allow me to create projects. And this is the highest level, but you will need this if you're creating projects, especially paid tier and stuff like that. It will make sense that you'd want to be just an organization owner and not something you'd want to give permission to for an organization member. But once you have that set as organization owner, you're gonna go next and you're gonna have your public key and private key. So copy these, take them down, they will disappear or the private key will not be around once you go off the screen. So do make sure you have that copied. If you're following along, these will no longer be there for you to access. So do set up your own, but you will need your private key here. And as well as that, you'll need to add uh, API access. So you will need to add your current IP address. Once you have all of that, you can hit done and you'll be ready to add these as your environment variables for your application. So now back in our application, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the main.tf. So this is where we're actually going to be provisioning our project, our cluster, and any indexes we need. Now for this, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with just a Terraform block, and I'll just paste it in there. So this is just saying our required provider is MongoDB Atlas. So the MongoDB Atlas provider is just an official plugin that basically allows Terraform to manage your MongoDB Atlas for you. After this, what we're going to do is we're going to actually configure the MongoDB Atlas provider itself. So if I go down here and I'm going to paste in MongoDB Atlas and we're going to take in our public and private key that we're going to need to actually work on our particular MongoDB Atlas account. Now, next after this, we need to do the actual project setup. So again, I'm going to paste in here and here we just have the name of the project and the org ID that we set in our variables earlier. Now, a lot of this is very straightforward so far. What we're going to do next is going to be our cluster configuration. So this is building the actual cluster. So pasting this in, you'll already see it's a bit more. Now, first of all, we have the project ID. So this is the project ID that we have up before. And underneath that, we're going to have our cluster name. Again, our cluster name comes straight from our variables. So underneath that, we're going to define our cluster type. So cluster type, we're saying it's a replica set. And for the replication specs, what we're going to do is we're going to specify the instance size. So we're going to go for the M10 pay tier, and we're going to say we want a node count of three. As well as that, we're going to have our provider name. We're going with AWS. You can also use Google Cloud Provider as well as that. You can use Azure, but we're going with AWS for this case for no reason. And under that, we will have our region name. This one, a bit more of a reason, EU West 1. This is closer to myself. Of course, pick a region that's closer to yourself if you don't want to have to deal with massive latency of sending connection requests across the world. And then a priority of seven. So this affects the election process if a node fails. Basically, this is just say or setting up a resilient production ready node. Now, after this, we want to do our IP whitelisting. So underneath all of this resource, we're going to go down and we're going to say our IP access list is going to be IP list. We're going to have the project ID and we're going to say for the IP address, which is what we configured in our variables earlier and what we're going to set as an environment variable at the end of writing out this file. So nothing too exciting there, but after that, we're going to have to set up our database user. Okay, so this is the last one to add to it. So our database user, we're basically setting as an admin with the roles or with the name admin and with the roles read write and for the database name rag. So inside of our cluster, we're going to have a database named rag and this is what the user is only going to be allowed read write to. Now, again, for this, we're keeping the username and password out of the main file for security reasons. Of course, in production ready stuff, you would never want that inside the actual main.tf. And now that we have all of this, we're actually going to set the environment variables. So to do this, what we're going to do is just in terminal here, I'm going to paste this down below. And you'll see here, I have export tf underscore var and then atlas org ID, and that will be MongoDB, my org ID. As well as that, I have the public key, the private key, username, password, IP address. You'll see all of these start with tf underscore var. What this allows Terraform to do is to automatically pick up that these are environment variables to be used in our variables.tf file. So very handy if you're doing this, but you're gonna to wanna to fill these out with your own values. And then once you hit enter, after that, we're gonna actually go to initializing our Terraform project and to applying the configuration. So you'll see here after my Terraform apply, we get similar as to earlier, but with just one to add and this one resource is going to be our vector search index. 
If you found this tutorial useful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, head over to our developer center for more content. If you want to ask any questions, just leave them down below. I'll be there to answer them. And as well as that, if you have any more questions to do with MongoDB, you can head over to our community forums. You can see what other people are doing with MongoDB or just get in touch with us. Thank you. Bye.